engage with H&M having a climate positive ambition, climate positive value chain by 2040, and a climate neutral supply chain by 2030. And again, that's around the corner. So again, I want to say from a private sector perspective that we absolutely applaud restrictions when it comes to raising the bar on chemicals and waste. And again, when you have the time, Minister Berlin, we're happy to meet with you. Thanks to all Bayern students <coughs> for the leadership regarding the Bayern Mission Alliance. We will start negotiations upon the sound management of chemicals and waste beyond 2020 in a few weeks in Montenegro. The paper presented by the two co-chairs of the intercessional process is a very good basis in this regard. We have already heard several times this morning that we will not achieve the 2020. But this was the reason why cycle was adopted in 2006. And from my point of view, the main reason is the lack of capacity building in developing countries and the fact that the multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral approach couldn't fulfill the expectations regarding a successful collaboration in the chemicals and waste cluster. And therefore, we will discuss in Montevideo, of course, also this encompassing platform, not only the success of the cycle 2.0, uh, and uh, I think it's, it's necessary to avoid misunderstandings. This encompassing platform doesn't mean that we want to establish more bureaucracy. We want to strengthen the cooperation and collaboration between cycle, the conventions, and the international organizations, so that we have a chance that all uh, uh, related uh, uh, players in, in the chemical and waste cluster uh, can act in their own mandate, but to raise attention on the uh, importance of uh, management of chemicals and waste, especially if we want to achieve as we want our 2020 goal. So I'm pleased that the High Ambition Alliance committed to raise political attention in these issues and I'm sure that we will succeed next year in Bonn at ICC5 with your support. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'd like to invite Argentina to just arrive if you want to have the floor. And um, you're done. Would you like to say, say something or not? Please, please have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, as Argentina, we are happy to be part of this meeting. Uh, we are also worried about the the this, this uh, scenario that we will not be reaching the, the goal of having the own management of, of chemicals and waste by 2020. Uh, so we, we welcome all the efforts that uh, uh, we are, all of us are taking in order to start working uh, in this regard. Uh, next month, starting in Montevideo, and uh, in, in this idea uh, of having a, a strengthened uh, framework. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, please, ICCA, after you, we have IPAM and OECD. In the last but not the least, in a matter of Okay? Muito obrigado, Luiz Ebal. De nada, seja bem-vindo. I'd like to thank Sweden and Uruguay for the opportunity to, and for convening this discussion and our opportunity to participate. 
the comment was made earlier that we cannot achieve the sustainable development goals without sound management of chemical waste. I submit to you that also means that you cannot achieve the sustainable development goals without the miracle of chemistry to get there. Now, we welcome the effort, the opportunity to be engaged in the HHA discussion, the high ambition discussion. We're ready to aid and accelerate the efforts to improve capacity for implementation. Um, in the Global Chemicals Outlook report, for example, the annex outlines 10 specific actions up to and beyond 2020 that can be taken to improve implementation. The industry fully supports these 10 categories of action, and we believe we can make some significant contributions to many of them, addressing knowledge gaps, supporting effective management systems, assessing and management, managing risks in the life cycle. We also agree that the SICOM effort needs to better define success, establish metrics and, and standards for determining how we assess progress, and focus our activity on those key, key areas where we're going to um, actually uh, make progress. We also agree we need to focus on implementation of the existing multilateral environmental agreements, we as an industry are committed to implementation of those conventions. We are not ready to support the High Ambition Alliance until we have some additional clarity about the envision, um, I think the term now is enabling framework, which we think is a, a valuable way of thinking about this framework. Um, we also need some additional clarity about governance of this approach. But I want to assure you that as the industry, we're committed to working with governments toward our mutual goals. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Michael, uh, Mike, please. Uh, yeah. I'm Justin yeah. and uh, Uruguay. Uh, I'm Tata Samara, representing IPEN, International Polytons uh, Elimination Network. IPEN supports the initiative, and it has three considerations to be taken for the Higher Ambition Alliance. The first one is a timeless vision and uh, broad scope that encompasses the entire life cycle. Uh, including wastes. The vision should be timeless, include prevention as a priority, and add to protect human health and the environment. The scope should include the entire life cycle and all wastes as noted in SDG 12.4. Second, an enabling framework that acts as an umbrella for all chemicals related agreements. The new enabling framework should include all chemicals related multilateral agreements under one high-level umbrella. The enabling framework would respect the legal autonomy of all the agreements it includes and provide several key features, like greater coherence among objectives, implementation and reporting, high-level political ownership, full implementation of the chemical safety contribution to the sustainable development goals, link to funded national action plans, and a multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder participation. Third, in the final one, measurable contributions to the sustainable development goals through a rose SICOM 2.0. SICOM's broad scope over uh, which covers many chemical exposures that lie outside the framework of current chemical conventions, with the current rapid expansion of chemicals used in chemical production in the, develop in the developing world, there is a growing need for a stronger, more capable cycle that respects proper political priority and adequate resources. Some components should include, one, a, national, a, a reasonable number of ambitious objectives with targets that have specific dates and provide measurable contributions to the sustainable development goals. Two, a universal periodic review method for reporting. Three, adequate predictable and sustainable financing that includes internalization of costs of chemicals, chemical producing industries at the global level. For your consideration, a 0.1% levy on the chemical industry would produce 5.8 billion per year, 5.8 billion dollars per year for implementation of chemical safety measures and that will be inconsistent with the Rio Principle 16. Uh, fourth, authentic engagement of all IOMC uh, organizations and convention secretariats. And finally, no 
reinvention re of the International Conference Rules of Procedure Bureau and other cycle elements with a functional track record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us uh, for all this very important topic. Uh, I am the environment director and uh, at the OEC. Thank you, Rodolfo. Rodolfo Lassi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we also have chemists in our team. So we have a robust team of chemists, experts in these topics, and we produce a lot of uh, standards and legal instruments that our uh, country members are implemented and are following. And let me give you an example, because yes, we must save lives, but we can, if we do our job well, we can save money too. We have this system of moral assistance of data uh, that are saving our countries and the industry about 300 million euros per year, just because we have a standardized test procedure to ensure that what we assure that the, the, the chemicals are not toxic to the environment, that are not health harmful for the public. And also our members are applying guidance for chemical accidents that are quite relevant as, 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 as we establish uh, air warning systems in the climate change convention, we have to establish these uh, procedures uh, planet how to address chemical accidents and also we have principles to address illegal trade of pesticides. Recently our committee our <coughs> and the council approved uh, this uh, uh, best practice guidance to uh, fight illegal trade of pesticides and it's only one of the chemicals that we are trading illegally. So uh, this can be used as a blueprint for developing the targets and milestones of the new international framework and we are more than willing to team up with other IGOs in the context of the IOC uh, to assist countries in implementing this system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the sound management of the chemicals and waste is indispensable for implementing the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, as was mentioned uh, by the EU Commissioner, many goals are linked to chemicals and waste, so by addressing sound management, we'll be supporting various goals. Um, chemicals are an increasingly important part of the world's economies. Chemicals are everywhere. We cannot live without chemicals, as was just, just said. Um, and therefore, uh, as we have been emphasizing this morning, the global chemicals production can only be expected to continue increasing. Um, implementing the chemicals and waste uh, related to SDGs is a considerable challenge uh, for all of us, and it needs to be addressed with much more will, strength, ambition. Um, this uh, requires the engagement and the relevant uh, the engagement and the commitment of all the relevant sectors and, and stakeholders. And the Minamata Convention Secretariat is, is very enthusiastic to cooperate with the Alliance uh, under the Convention's mandate with commitment, engagement, and ambition. Uh, we will support the objectives of the Alliance through uh, our outreach uh, activities, through our capacity building, training, science, science related activities. So, um, thank you very much. Sorry. Now, I will break the protocol uh, to ask you understand this because I want a new woman on the floor, on the map. Voila. Okay. Suppose that I should do the product, but I give up because we should see it. And just bet on your mind. Okay, we should. And so, please, we should have the product, wrap up, the key conclusion, and then we should close. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you very much, Isabella, and uh, thank you again uh, to the governments of Uruguay and Sweden for their great leadership on this. Um, I am a little taken by surprise, but thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to wrap up. I put out seven key messages that I will share with you in terms of uh, what I heard here. And uh, the first one, of course, is that there's a lot going on already in the chemicals and waste space, 
but the scale of the challenge is huge and therefore we need much more ambition and we need much more action and much more attention to the vulnerable peoples of the world. And this is very clear. The second very clear message that came out was the need for policy coherence and greater synergies across the work we do while respecting our mandates of the different organizations that lead on chemicals and waste or work on chemicals and waste. The third important point is the importance of sustainable consumption and production circularity in the sound management of chemicals and waste, both as an approach to chemicals and waste, but also to improve sustainable consumption and production circularity itself. So both ways you need uh, a sound management of chemicals and waste. The fourth point was the point of the importance of life cycle and value chain approaches, the importance of education, the importance of R&D in chemicals and waste management. Each of these have very clear roles to play. The issue of transboundary movements and spillover effects of chemicals and waste was highlighted and the need for governance and reporting on these issues in order to ensure that uh, we are in a better position to control the movement of national um, chemicals. The sixth was the issue of building capacities for chemicals management systems as well as monitoring systems at the global, regional and national level. And I would also like to bring, bring in here, although it was not brought in, uh, the attention to the implementation plan towards a pollution-free planet where we speak to these capacities that are required across uh, chemicals and waste management. And the importance, finally, of national leadership and industry and youth engagement in ensuring that chemicals and chemicals management deliver on the SDGs. Isabella, I hope that was okay. Thank you.